Hello, gentle viewers. This is Ev Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Mark Baseball 23 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. In our last episode, we got utterly raffle stomped by the Washington Nationals. It wasn't even close. Um, and now we are making our next steps. <coughs> So, we are currently sitting on a pretty giant chunk of change. The question is, who is worth bringing back, and where can we afford to make some upgrades? Um, we could bring Javi Guzman back. However, I don't think he was that good. And I bet there'll probably be at least one more great pitcher on the market. Obviously, I can't prove that, but I think that is likely to happen. It doesn't help that Guzman wants basically what he's making now, and I don't think that's worth it. I genuinely don't think that is a good use of our limited resources. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and advance some time now. I don't expect any changes to the lineup. I think the lineup as is, is pretty strong and does what it needs to do. What we need in order to be a better team next year are first and foremost, a better season from Jordan Munoz and just the rest of the team to just play at or about the level they did this season. Um, that's really all we need. The lineup is going to be fine. The question is, what are we going to get out of the rest of the team? Um, I'd love to get one more quality starting pitcher. Uh, if, if that could be arranged, that would be lovely. Um, because while Love and Sinclair make an excellent top, what we quickly established is that the rest of the rotation is still somewhat lacking. So we're going to have some decisions to make there. I'd just like to strengthen the bullpen potentially but really we're not far off from having just continuing to be an excellent team we don't have a lot of obvious weaknesses and so that gives us the time to really truly explore the best of the best and see what we might be able to acquire uh jai woodard is still only 18. I am more than content to let him pitch uh, in the minors for an additional season. I don't want to rush him. Let's let him develop a bit farther. Um, I already did the other promotions and stuff. I think Orlando Salgado would benefit from another year in high A. Um, yeah, stuff is happening. Um, we do need a new backup catcher that might be... Julian Farias. <clears throat> Although Farias also has a legitimate opportunity to even be a starting catcher. Um, I think his bat offers a lot of exciting potential and he's always hitting the minors. So that could be another avenue for us to get better as a team. Um, I don't ever want to replace Servine because of his value as a team captain. Oh, is he no longer a captain? If he's no longer considered a captain, yeah, he's not. He's just considered a leader. That actually makes Servine a lot less valuable to me. And so I think Mr. Farias here has a really good chance at getting significant playing time as a catch war. Um, I don't think... I think Julian Williams is going to stay our center fielder. Um, I acknowledge if Rodine is a better center fielder, like defensively, but I think Julian Williams really performed at a really high level, and I think it would be silly to guarantee you Rodine's spot. When Williams is capable of producing at that level, or even a little bit better. <coughs> um, okay. All right, 
let's go ahead and simulate forward just a bit. Uh, you've gotten a better offer from someone else, Josh Parrish. I have 150 grand, my friend. Joe, Joe, Mama. Uh, Laguna wants a bit more money. I'll happily pay you 150 grand. Now, Pagan was annoyed by my one-year contract offer. I don't really see Clarity giving you 10 million. You're already getting <clears throat> a pretty substantial raise. Let's do a little over nine. Um, yeah, Nelson Alvarez, you suck. Wait, no, you don't. You're actually not terrible. Like, you're asking for, like, a fairly minor raise. Obviously, I'm going to give it to you. Great. All right, we got Rada back. I guess the fans really liked him. Um, I didn't realize that. I don't know if Sal Rada was so popular. Um, you're correct. I did have to activate Guzman and Avishan. Oh, is my 40-man roster full? It is full. Interesting. Well. <clears throat> Al Dominguez, I'm terribly sorry, but that's going to be it for you as a pirate. Manny Toro <clears throat> is fine, but he's never been exceptional, and so I think waving him is reasonable too. <clears throat> Goodness. Goodness. And then I can activate all the Sean. What if we get any awards this season? I'm not sure. I don't think we at least got a good chance at a Silver Slugger. Yeah. Uh, Pagan was the only person who won a Silver Slugger. I'm a little surprised Navio didn't. Like, I think he had better than Danny Alvarado. But I'm not that annoyed by it. Um, I think it's perfectly reasonable. And I'm happy to see at least Pagan got his due. Um, Julian Williams has an off chance. Yeah, he actually did get Rookie of the Year. I'm not that surprised. He had a really positive season. He's a pretty talented player. Uh, both of you can happily go to AAA. We might get a Cy Young for Sinclair, potentially. Hmm. Yeah, I did. Unanimous, too. All right. Hall of Fame voting. You know I love it. Um, Andres Barones, absolutely, is highly deserving of the Hall of Fame. I don't like the innings total. That makes me pause for voting for Corey Anderson. But on the other hand, maybe it's just the new normal. 
I will vote for him uh, just to see how he does. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of players that aren't terribly impressive. Castro and Gray, I guess, are fine. Mike Giles seems like a fair choice. Rory Gratton, sure. How did Phil Kimball stay on the ro stay on the Hall of Fame roster as long as he did? That's truly bizarre to me. He's not that good. Um, I'm going to let Danny Morales slide. I don't think 500 should be automatic. They have to do something else that's really noticeable to get elected. In my eyes, I will vote for Jose Rubio, though. Uh, Mike Sianez seems like an okay choice. No, no, Randy Simmons is a yes. Ty Sims is a yes. Ramon Zamora is such a weird dude. I kind of think you have to celebrate him, even if I'm not overall impressed by him, just because he had that many homers in that little of time. Um, I'm mostly voting for people I don't feel great about. Like, other than Barones, I don't think anyone else here is necessarily deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I did not vote for Kirk Coates. I was voting for Danny Castro, you sneaky bugger. <clears throat> yes, like, I can see a bunch of Hall of Famers here, but I think the very best ones are were not in this particular draft class. All right. So a lot of the free agents are once again on the old side. No surprises there. <clears throat> Sorry, I have apparently quite the throat issue today. I'm sorry, what? You're a true two-way guy. Like, and a good two-way guy. Um, give him to me immediately. A player like that is just insanely valuable. Because certainly, he's not exactly a slot as a starter. He's not perfect. But he's a good control guy with good movement, great stamina. Yeah, I just think that he's got the potential to be a really good player for us. Uh, all right, let's look at all players. And let's look at default. And let's see who the very best players available are. I am not signing Jose Amaya. Um, absolutely not. That's ridiculous. I can bring in Willy Magana to compete for a spot in the bullpen. I like that idea. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with Alex Avila. Because there's basically no risk in these deals. It's either they don't play and I don't care, or they do play and they're productive. Um, there aren't any really great starters here, so I think snagging a guy like Hilliard is a bit of a coup. Um, and we can said spend our money wisely to extend the players we already have, or maybe trade to acquire some, some really great pieces. Um, are there any 
out are there any other positions I'd like some reinforcements at? Jacob Miller is going to be a utility man, a king among utility men, as long as he wants a job. Aravalo's really solid. Soto is a great piece. I'm not seeing a lot here that really convinces me that, yes, this is an obvious weakness that we need to address. <clears throat> like, truly, truly, I don't see anything here that we would be remiss if we didn't address. We already have a very deep outfield uh, between the guys like Verdeen uh, and Jalen White, who shortly will be going to the minors. If not disappearing entirely. Like, I guess... Okay, who's playing first right now? Pagan is playing first and Munoz is DHing. Okay. That's acceptable. I don't think I'm going to mess any more in free agency. I think I've got most of what I want. Um, I'm kind of surprised John Navio didn't get any consideration for MVP unless he did, and I just missed it. That's a bit weird. <coughs> oh, goodness. Hmm. <coughs> Oh, Hilliard, let me make this incredibly clear to you. You are doing both. I definitely want you pitching as well as hitting. I'm sorry that they're sad, but I wasn't going to pay him that much money. So he's just going to have to suck it up. You know, I could have set him to set DH while pitching. Skip DH while pitching. <clears throat> oh, he's not even on the 40 man yet. There we go. Plus, he's a righty. That just makes him so valuable to me. He's so valuable um, as, like, somebody that can offset Munoz. So our opening day rotation is probably Sinclair, Love, Werner, Avishan, and the new guy, Hilliard. I think I can live with that. I think that's a pretty solid rotation. With a guy like Victor Rios just waiting in the wings, I think it gives us a tremendous amount of uh, strength. Oh, the Rule 5 draft. I almost skipped it. Whoopsie daisy. Any good Rule 5 candidates? Didn't I already have one Castro in the Rule 5 and then I let him go back? Yeah, I did. 
You're not fooling me a second time. Arunus does have elite power and play discipline. I am concerned about his ability to develop though when he hasn't even played in double A yet. So I think I'm just gonna opt out of this particular... No, that's not true. <clears throat> yeah, it is. I'm, I'm done. Uh, I'll just complete the draft. Eh. Bryce Presley's not a catcher, but other than that, I kind of like that deal for them. Uh, before we go any farther, I want to quickly examine Hilliard and set him up the way I want him to be set up. Okay. So, um... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have him skip the DH when pitching. That'll automatically um, give frequent breaks uh, once every five days. And he's definitely available for pinch hitter uh, if he's tired. Um, other than that, I think this is fine. Uh, I think he's completely fine. To be in the rotation and then pinch hitting and grabbing a player says another times when he can. Plus, just having that big of power threat off the bench is gonna be very, very good. Um, it's gonna be extremely helpful. It's going to set us up very, very nicely um, as just having that extra dimension. Plus, it's two players with one spot, which is always great. Oh, who made the Hall of Fame? Uh, Barones, Zamora, Rory Gratton, and Jose Rubio. Well, that's fine. Leo Mendoza. Is earning six million. Okay. And neat. Yeah, the only lineup change is going to be uh, our starting catcher. Other than that, I'm fine with the lineup we had at the end of last season. I truly think Julian Williams is an excellent fit for this roster and offers us a little bit more offensively than Verdine does while not being a bad center fielder. Um, what do we see here? Yeah, Mike Grasham is pretty much a non-factor now. Um,
Okay, awesome. So let's start stocking a spring training roster with players. Um, Alex Avila is going to get a chance. In spring training, Willie Mangana can have a bit of a chance. I'm going to let Xavier Roberson get uh, a spring training appearance. I'm going to do the same thing for Michael Broadwater. I think they're both in the system long enough that they deserve at least a chance to show some growth in spring training. Um, this looks good. Uh, go ahead and set the lineups. Uh, absolutely do not play Verdeen over Williams, though. Williams is my starting center fielder. It's interesting to have Julian Williams, or John Navio, bat second, but I'm kind of here for it. And we're going to set a six-man rotation, and then we're going to go ahead and ask for a staff. Uh, why would I want Alex Hilliard to be a closer? He's got the stuff to start. Um, I'm going to use Hilliard instead of Rada as the starter. And then see what happens uh, going with that. <clears throat> and you can be emergency starter along with Um, I definitely want Avishan starting uh, over Mangana. Or Magana. There we go. Um, and you can do long relief emergency starter. And then we're going to go ahead and sim through spring training. We're going to have some decisions to make. Um, okay. Whatevs. Whatever. Ahem. <clears throat> 
Um, Xavier Roberson is getting better, but I don't think he's ready for the big leagues yet. Same thing with Hector Medina. Yeah, we're going to have some interesting decisions to make uh, right now, actually. I got 43 players. I don't need 43 players. How long is Ab Oh, Abishon is still out for another four months. All right, so I have 20 pitchers. I would like it most 13, and only because one of them will be Hilliard. So Michael Broadwater was never going to be in the big leagues this season. I want him to get regular reps in double A. Um, our current rotation is Sinclair, Love, Rios, Warner, and Hilliard. I like that a lot, actually. I think that's got lots of legs to it. I'm here for that. Let's start going through the relievers now. Camacho to the minors. Grasham will go to the minors, but if he refuses, I'm just going to try to uh, trade him. But I got a sinking suspicion no one's going to offer me anything for him, but we'll see. If I can get literally anything for Grasham, I will trade him. Yeah. I think he won't... If I remember correctly, I don't think he will void his... Wave his... No, he'd consider a trade. Um, it's just that nobody wants him. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go ahead and release my Grasham. I've got the money... And there's no sense keeping him on the roster when he's not a good enough player. Um, Osorio to the minors. Rubio to the minors. I saw some hope that Rubio might be a starter. So I'm going to let him stay in the minors. Alright, we have Alvarez, Avila, and Calderon. Of those three, Alvarez is probably the least effective. How close are we to being, do I add to having the spots I want? Uh, no, give me pitching. I have 15 pitchers, gotta get rid of two. Um, I'll try to trade Calderon. I have a sneaking switch and somebody's gonna want to give Calderon an opportunity. And he's not that expensive. Uh, you know what? A guy like Orlando Morales would be a great fit for this team, so... Complete trade. And last but certainly not least, I'd between Avila and Alvarez. The thing is, Avila is a lefty, and Alvarez is not. Let's trade Alvarez. Let's try to get ourselves a prospect. Nobody wants to do it. <sighs> no, keeping Avila is stupid. I'm just going to go ahead and release him. It doesn't cost me anything, so he can depart. All right, please list Hilliard as a starting pitcher just so I don't forget about him. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so here's our five-man rotation. Let's go ahead and set this up. Um, Juan Love has given us 190 innings that season, which is amazing. I want to get one more season out of him before I take the, before I take the, the handcuffs off. Okay. Um, for the other setup, I would like Winton Julian to be the other setup guy. I like Toss being the number one setup guy. And I don't want 
Ching Chong's gonna have the stamina to do the two inning thing. So we're gonna do seventh. You can be a backup specialist if we need one. Um, I'm gonna set all you guys as middle relief. I really want Sal Rada pitching regularly in a middle relief role. Um, so I'll make a middle relief long relief and use more often. And then we're going to make Willie Magana is going to be our emergency starting pitcher if we need one. And a long reliever. So this means that Magana needs to be added to the roster, which he was. Congratulations, my friend. Well deserved. All right. Now position players. I've got to get down to 26 hold which means non-position players got to go. Two of them are going to be catchers. Roberson goes to double A. And Medina played in triple A last season, but only for a tiny bit. Uh, please return to triple A, Medina. So I think Faris is going to be our opening day catcher. He's just a better hitter than Servine. And you know Servine is a marginally better defender. I don't think that makes Farias a liability. So I definitely think we're making the right call there. Um, Ernesto Turner. I don't think he deserves to be on the team anymore. I truly don't. Um, I wonder if I can get any kind of decent prospect for him. Yeah, I think I'm just going to uh, wave him and see if we can get him through there. Uh, no Bruce Aguirre, no Emilio Galvez, no Alex Rosado. This thing, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven infielders. I don't need seven. Um, Arovalo is a really talented backup. Uh, Jacob Miller is not a very good defender, is he? I'm going to send Miller back to the minors. Aguinaga doesn't make the roster. How is Jalen White still showing as a Rule 5 guy? Like, I'm not going to keep him if you're going to force me to keep him. So, that's weird. I don't know why that keeps happening, but sure. And now we're down to 26. And I think it's the right 26. So, let us now proceed to clear all the lean-ups. Okay, so we want batting ratings. Our very best hitter is still Henry Salgado. So Salgado, I think, makes sense as our number three hitter. Pagan hitting cleanup. <clears throat> and John Navio hitting fifth. I mean, we can quibble whether it should be Pagan or Navio, but either way, I feel really good about the 3-4-5. Um, where's Julian Williams? Soto's a better hitter than he is by a fair bit. So Soto's going to lead off. Then Julian Williams bats second. And the DH is going to be... Is it Hilliard? No, I think this works best as a platoon. Um, Munoz will continue to be the DH against lefties. Or righties, rather. Because Mr. Hilliard, while being an outstanding hitter, is, I think, a little bit more useful to me as the other half of a platoon. Um, because I do think Munoz deserves a chance to try to reclaim his terrible, terrible previous season. Does Hilliard have a split? 
with his bat. He does hit lefties a bit better, so I'm happy with this. Um, Almaquer is going to bat seventh. Farias is going to bat eighth, and Freddy Suarez will bat. Um, Verdine is going to cover all three outfield positions without a moment's hesitation. Hugo Arivalo becomes the primary backup at all three of the infield positions. Alex De La Nuez is going to be a backup at first. Uh, Hilliard backs up at DH, and I also want Hilliard covering the corners. Um, I think he is a reasonably good corner infielder, outfielder, so having him available is going to be useful. Hilliard is number one pinch hitter, followed by Mr. Verdine. Verdine is going to be a pinch runner. As is De La Nuez. De La Nuez is also there. And then Servine is going to be our fourth hitter. He's going to back up a catcher. I am perfectly fine with this lineup. Um, I do want to get De La Nuez in as a backup uh, second baseman as well. There we go. Then I'm going to copy and paste this over. And then we're just going to go a boop and a boop. So basically the way I'm using Hilliard is he's going to play, he's going to DH against all left-handed pitching. And on top of that, if he's starting, he's going to be the DH. So what's going to do is it's going to make sure that Munoz has fewer at-bats. Um, which hopefully will make the at-bats he does have much more productive. This is a really good lineup. Like, Julian Farias, I, I feel like we can't sleep on him and what he can offer us as a catcher. And we have an incredible bench, who the only player that's kind of a dodgy offensive contributor is going to be Arvalo. And even he could be a perfectly cromulent option if we needed him. Okay, my friends, let's advance up to opening day. Not a lot of fireworks this off season, but there's always moves in season that may or may not be made depending on how we're looking uh, later on. And uh, I think there's a lot of really good chances to, to really make some noise. Uh, oh, Mike Iglesias got $9 million for one year. That's good for him. Oh, that's going to do it for today, though, my friends. I know that was the most exciting episode, but I hope you still found it entertaining. And it's going to be on time, which is more than I could say for last week. Sorry about that again. Uh, please enjoy. I uh, hope you're enjoying this channel. If you are, like, subscribe, comment down below. Until next time, this is Vinav Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.